Don't allow other people's beliefs about what's possible or impossible for them become your own belief. Yeah, and to affect your outcome or for you to allow that in so that you discourage yourself out of something amazing. Yeah. I think the most important level, which is something that most people don't think about, is the integrity with yourself. Mm -hmm. If you don't have integrity with yourself, in terms of what you say you're going to do, when you're going to do it, or even the self-love component going back to the very beginning, it's going to be very difficult to maintain that integrity with others. Mm -hmm. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to our show. My name is Jenny Woon. My name is Tony Singh. And um, how have you been, Tony? Jenny, I'm enjoying my summer so much. And I've had a little bit of time to spend time with you as well. Maybe from like the beginning of summer, we went to that real estate uh, conference as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm really enjoying life. How about you? Although I feel like <laughs> we were so busy even during, like while listening at it's that true. conference. It's true. It's true. But I still got to see your beautiful face and spend a bit of time with you. We Thank had lunch. You. We did. One we day. Did. Yes. <laughs> um, we're always trying to improve ourselves and read self development books, trying to really understand who we are as we evolve in this industry. And I kind of wanted to have an episode on um, traits or things that would make people successful. Yeah, and I think we've touched on this in another previous episode as well. But I think that, listen, there's two simple things, right, that we're going to talk about today that I think embody all of the other traits we've previously talked about well. Mm -hmm. Like really, it's only the two things. There's more, but I just found that these two are really good things that we um, can explain a little bit further. Okay, let's go deeper. So everyone's always looking for this quick get rich tactic uh in this in this um industry. Mm-hmm. And and then not necessarily that they want to get rich, but they want to try to get 10 to 20,000 or an easy way like quickly. Right, to get the next deal, uh to make the six figures and they're looking for a quick hack on this business or how to get go viral. And so mm-hmm. exactly like how to be an influencer, right? Like the influencers always trying to find a quick shortcut to be to become famous overnight. Yeah. And I want to know how do you show up in this world? How do top performers in this business show up in this world? How do successful people show up in this world on a daily basis? Mm-hmm. I think that most of the successful people that I know or that we know, because we know a lot of the same people. Um, they share one really special trait, which is speaking their truth and living their most authentic self. Why is this so important? Um, Well, I'm going to ask you the same question, but I Mm -hmm. think it's so important because I think when you're doing that, you're truly aligned and (laughs) you're able to execute with ease. I think that sometimes the human part of ourselves want to trick ourselves into believing something else that's not in alignment. And I think that's when we can become distracted by shiny objects or things that perhaps wouldn't serve our best interest to be focusing on. Mm -hmm. What would you say, in your opinion, is like, why is speaking your truth and being your most authentic self important for success? Um, Okay, so I want to go back to, I guess, what people would have thought how I was. Okay, let's, okay. yeah, that's fun. Because it relates to speaking my truth. So as I was um, growing my career, I was so hyper-focused on staying in my own lane. Mm-hmm. And staying in my own lane just means putting my head down to do the work that I need to do, the, to, do to get to a, a phase in this business where I can kind of be like right now, like just relax and and um, be a leader. And so I was so uh, self-empowering or self-leading myself in, in a way where I f- think people felt I wasn't humaning. I wasn't humanizing myself. Like I wasn't That's connecting so with them. That's so crazy because I, I know you. I know you and you're not that at all. But I could see how people's perception 
of you is bringing out that their own um what is it that i want to say their own insecurities self stuff. exactly that's what i could see yeah yeah so me just focusing on myself being my most authentic self and being disciplined i guess um brought out insecurities out of them or they perhaps were jealous or whatever it was but anyways I was speaking my own truth. I had my own boundaries. I didn't want to be in any toxic environment. I didn't want to be involved in any drama. Yeah. Right? And so I wanted to live a life that I knew that I was contributing to and that everything I was doing was intentional and significant to me. And therefore, I felt like I lived the most authentic me. Yeah, and that's where you need to be. And that's why you've had the level of success that you have. And listen, for our listeners, I'm just going to put this out there because I know Jenny. Some of you have the pleasure of knowing her personally, some not. You've just been introduced to us through the podcast. But she is literally the most, one of the most loving people and smart business minds that I know. So it's funny to hear this, but I could see why people could perceive you that way. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, I mean, I, I can understand like I wasn't connecting vulnerably. And yeah. so I, I feel <laughs> like, um, and that is a lot of, you know, just trying to protect myself. But you that's know? also so. kind of a product of our, um, the traditional Masculine. real estate industry, right? So yeah. I did the same thing. And, and, you know, we've had conversations mm-hmm. about it where, for me, at least, I've hidden parts of the feminine, divine feminine away because it was too, like I had to protect myself too. And so the masculine traits came out. And sometimes that can label you as a female in this industry as a huge bitch or like a hardcore negotiator, right. which I am familiar with. And that's not what it was, right? I just believe mm-hmm. that people need to take responsibility for their own stuff. Mm-hmm. And that could make me cold, mm-hmm. um, but I I just live by that truth. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Thank you for your kind words. Oh, you're welcome. I mean every, I mean all of them. Okay, so we talked about the first one. There is a second one that is, it's kind of related, I want to say, to the first point, mm-hmm. which is um, showing up. Do you want to elaborate? Yeah. Um, yeah, I wrote showing up because, and it's in capital bold letters here. Show up. <laughs> Show up <laughs> every day, no matter what. Um, and so... Showing up, and it's a. Com- I've always been my own competitor. Mm. I've never wanted to co- like compete or make anyone feel like I'm competing against them. But you're. I'm just re outworking everyone. And the way I did it was in a, a physical way. I like you know me. I mm-hmm. don't sleep too much, mm-hmm. so I would be working during the daytime, and then I would be working all the way till three, four in the morning, mm-hmm. right? And so uh, that's just how I perform. And I wasn't trying to outlast or outbeat anyone intentionally. It was more just that's just the way my my body works. I want to say one other thing to this right now too, because I think that for our listeners, they might mistake outworking with hustle culture. That's not the way that Jenny means it right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's just thank have you. that be clear. Yeah, Right. And so thank you for, that's a good segue into what I mean is you're just, I was so deeply rooted into um, my intention and my passion. And um, I wasn't trying to get the next paycheck or put more money into my, into my bank account. It was more just, I was so um, deeply, deeply in love with the work I was doing and the craft I was mastering at it was coming from inspiration right totally, which is a different place inspiration mm-hmm. yeah so it was yeah it wasn't chasing that like the next deal or i needed to close the next person um but it it really was more just how do i become a better person in general yeah i know so we're we're sharing with you those two things and there are two principles um that need to be mastered as a masterpiece creator for your success planning i'm gonna let jenny take it away here because i think these really resonate with her specifically Okay, I want you to go into a little bit of science here where you're playing with the left brain and the right brain. Sure. Okay, so I am I was very, very left-brained. And left brain meaning um, very focused on something, very direct messaging. Um, however, the 
beauty of it is to also activate your right brain where there's a lot of creative energy flow. Yeah, and you're also speaking to a larger sphere of influence here, which is what's been prized mostly in the Western world for sure are those masculine traits, right? Of like, oh, do the... I mean, we're, we're talking about a variety of things here, but that's really what was perpetuated in a mm-hmm. lot of the cycles and that's how we're brought up. Mm-hmm. So in in the hot, your highest most self... <laughs> Um, is to balance out the divine masculine, divine feminine. And um, when you're in your power, when you're in your um, oracle, it really doesn't take any energy at all. And so therefore, that's why I said, work doesn't feel like work. Yeah, so you're coming from a place of inspiration for sure. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when you're speaking, uh, like when you're being authentic, it doesn't take energy. But then when you're being inauthentic, it takes a lot of energy to be somebody else you're not. Yeah. You know, when you're being in your power, it doesn't take energy. But when you're trying to shrink and you're trying to give it away, it does take energy. See how that yin and yang. Mm-hmm. And then when you're speaking your truth, it doesn't take energy. It really just comes from uh, your body, like your stomach, your, your heart. Um, but when you're censoring yourself and not speaking your truth, that takes a lot of energy out of you. That's right. So it also closes your throat chakra. <laughs> so be, yes. So be willing to speak your truth that's really coming from your soul, coming from um, your heart. And when you no longer have to care uh, to chase this algorithm, um, the algorithm and the people will eventually just find you. 100%. And you're just connecting with the right people. Yeah. Thank you so, for sharing that. Yeah. Um, secondly, um, the other principle in trying to live in in mastering this planning is to um, when you're actually in good intentions and purpose, you end up collaborating with other people that are mm-hmm. like minded. And it's just magical. Yeah, no, magic can happen. Magic's alive in the world. Uh, and so how can you do this? How can you live in full purpose and intention? Daily rituals. Yeah, and when we say daily rituals, I think what we mean here is doing something that's going to be authentic to yourself and show yourself self-love. Because we can talk mm-hmm. about daily rituals where, you know, you get into a muddy area of what should I be doing, but what is actually going to serve you as yourself the best in this moment in time to take mm-hmm. care of you before you can take care of everyone else. I'm glad you said self-love versus self-care because self-care is different going to the spa <laughs> or or um, going for a run. You know, that is absolutely a form of self-love, but self-love is really just tr- truly like taking the time to be mindful of the thoughts that are in your head. What's an example of one of your rituals that you do to show yourself self-love? Very good question. Um, I would do um, my 10-minute body scan and body body uh, embodiment mm-hmm. um, exercise. And so that could look like it's I'm sitting, that could look like I'm standing. And I am wa- walking myself, thoughtfully walking myself through, checking through like how does my calves feel? How do my ears feel? How does my shoulder feel? And so really just checking in with myself Mm -hmm. and um, I guess regulating my nervous system. I should try that more often. I only do it sometimes. (laughs) It's really, it's such a good healthy exercise every day. And if you don't have time, I'm sure you have time in your car, like you're just waiting around. You could do it in your car. I, I have started meditating sometimes in my car in between appointments because I find that uh, it just fills me up so much more. You know, mm-hmm. just the silence, not checking the phone. Mm-hmm. I find that that really helps these days. It's so healthy to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing, another daily ritual is to be noticing yourself. Rather than being reactive, notice how you're feeling about the situation and taking some breathers, taking some maybe some tapping and really trying to understand where that source is coming from. 
Yeah, I think that the emotional trigger, like, you know, if you have an emotion, you could have the emotion, but why specifically are you feeling that emotion? Is it being, bringing up other things that need to be dealt with? Is it a trigger for something else? Mm-hmm. So I think you're talking about the self-awareness. Yes. Yeah. Just being unbothered. So I was talking to my partner about this the other day about being unbothered. Yeah. And are you going, like, how are you going to react to somebody who cuts you off? How are you going to react to someone who is um, spring water? By accident, um, when they're, I don't know, hosing their car, like in so true, or something like uh, maybe the server brought something incorrect to for on your meal, right? Mm-hmm. So that's just feeling like, does it really count? Does it really matter? How <laughs> I love you, this conversation so how much. How can you react where it doesn't bother you? and react to your nervous system. There is just uh, about the traffic thing. There was this guy the other day, I was driving to an appointment. Uh, It was a showing out in Port Coquitlam. And there was this poor guy that he was just honking at everybody, swearing at everybody. I could hear him and my windows were up. And I could understand how most people would take offense to that. But I started laughing out loud in my car. (laughs) <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, this poor human, he must have a really difficult life or be having a really difficult day for him to be lashing out at people like this. Mm. And then I just kind of went about my day. But you could see how if you're like, I could see how it's easy to take that personally. I guess I was in my sage in that moment. So it didn't really affect me at all. So it was yonk at you? Yeah, he did honk oh, at he me first. At and then I'm okay. like, oh. Yeah. And then he went on and continued to honk at the five other people ahead of me weaving in and out of traffic. Mm. So it clearly had nothing to do with, with any of us. You. It was yeah. just him. Yeah. It was funny. Yeah. I hope he's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So how you direct your energy is so important. So don't let others' beliefs uh, cause you to pause or stop what you're doing mm-hmm. because of their inability to see themselves for that potential. And what I mean by that is that don't allow other people's beliefs about what's possible or impossible for them become your own belief. Yeah. And to affect your outcome or for yeah. you to allow that in so that you discourage yourself out of something amazing. Yeah. And that's why I love hanging out with you, Tony, because you may, you're like, yeah, go do it. As, oh, thanks, Jenny. As crazy you can do as some anything. of my ideas are, yeah, let's do it. And I'm like, I my, don't understand why it's crazy. Some of my crazy <laughs> ideas that I present to my team, they're like, you want to do what? You want to do another thing? Yeah, I'm, I'm like, it's like, great. Yeah, it's it's a good idea. Let's do it. <laughs> so anyways. That's how this podcast started. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Yeah. How about aligning yourself with um, integrity? Oh, the most important thing. But you know what I find about this? It's a constant discussion in a lot of different business entrepreneurial realms. And I don't, know that people truly understand the levels of actual integrity, if we could just go there for a minute, because I think the way that some people look at it is integrity as an outward thing. So for example, if I tell Jenny I'm going to do something, obviously I need to follow through and do that or else I'm outside of integrity. But I think the most important level, which is something that most people don't think about, is the integrity with yourself. Mm -hmm. If you don't have integrity with yourself, in terms of what you say you're going to do, when you're going to do it, or even the self-love component going back to the very beginning, it's going to be very difficult to maintain that integrity with others. Mm -hmm. And I only realized that in my entrepreneurial journey. Um, Very interesting. Did you want to say something else about integrity? Um, I think it's more just um, when you're pleasing to people too much uh, and they're not aligned or maybe there, there's a bit of like self righteousness. Totally, it, it just it really does ick me that um, there's not a lot more generosity. And we actually learned that during the Richard Robbins yes um, session. It's all about generosity because you're basically put on this earth to give back. And it's generosity without expecting something in return, guys mm-hmm. and gals mm-hmm. and people. Mm-hmm. And finally, are Mm. you open to your own genius? I love this one. I (laughs) wanted to keep it last because I want everyone to tune in to their infinite, allowing themselves to play. I want them to um, allow themselves to make mistake. Allow them, allow yourself to know that you are good enough as you are. Absolutely. This is a good reminder, even, I mean, we're human, right? 
And I've only been able to be in my own genius more recently over the last few years. And it's still a learning thing for me. So I love that that one is last. Awesome. So I wanted to end this session, this podcast session, with sharing with our audience um, the oaths that we have to ourselves. Yeah, she puts me on the spot every time. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) So should we say some of them? Do you want to start off? Or do you want me to start off? Okay, you go. I can start off. Okay. So one oath that um, in order to respect my highest, my voice, of the divine, um, one of them. I will fully express how I feel is my first oath. I wonder if all of us are aligned. I'll tell you my first oath. I am authentic in my voice. I speak my truth and respect others for sharing theirs. Ooh, that's a good one. Similar though. Yeah, very similar. (laughs) Um, Okay, so that's your first one. My second one, um, my oath is I am responsible for all my doings. Love it. Yeah. I like that a lot. My second oath is I am creating and expressing clear boundaries in alignment with my highest good. So an example of that would be, yeah. right, because it, it kind of sounds just maybe too out there for some. <clears throat> an example of this would be me expressing clear boundaries with clients even, right, about when mm-hmm. I am going to be working, when I am not, or who will be looking after them on the team should I not be available. Mm. My third one is I will stop being passive and start being active. Yeah, I like that. I like that. My third one is I am unattached to the intended result. Uh, I chose that word specifically because how many times has it happened for you where you have a certain picture of what you want it to look like? Like you're you're leading Mm -hmm. up to something and you have a clear outcome of this is going to do this. I'm going to do A, B, and C and it's going to get me D, E, and F. But I've come to realize that in the not knowing and just the acceptance of like, this needs to happen. And I'm totally unattached to the results because something even better that I could have never thought would happen could be a result of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why I, I like that one. that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, my next one is I will treat myself with love and compassion, with gentle love and compassion, which is something that I've been working on very hard. It's important. Yeah. Yeah, because you're very hard on yourself. I am. I've been very I'm hard just, on myself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my fourth oath is I am pure joy, love, and abundance. So I that, that. that trans it's basically the root of everything for my life with my kids, my husband, family, friends, brokerage, clients. So I feel like that's in alignment for me. Mm. My last one that I want to share with everyone is... I am committed to being creatively, to be infinitely creative. Very powerful. Thank you. (laughs) My last oath is I create my future with inspired action, purpose, and intention. Oh, beautiful. A little bit of both, right? (laughs) Thank you, Tony, for sharing. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I think this is a little bit of, um, obviously, we're putting it out there. Mm -hmm. Some of our personal introspective work. And I'm wondering, you you guys, don't be nervous about getting in touch with some of the oaths that are important to you. I think we'd like to hear them. Uh, Yeah, even if you want to get together for coffee and we love, you know, having our um, brunches together, right? Yeah, I mean, is this a good time perhaps to say... You know what? This is a good time for us to share. Yes, we were having a, a, a lunch last week. Yeah. And we have bigger ideas beyond this podcast. Yeah. So we're just going to put it out there. Let's do it right now. You say it. (laughs) Okay. um, How would you guys feel? Like, it's amazing that we have such a loyal and awesome following ship, I guess, for the podcast. Mm -hmm. You guys reach out out to us often and we're so thankful that we share, you know, you share with us your stories of what you're going through and how some of these episodes have been really, a really big help. And Jenny and I are thinking about uh, doing in-person events. Mm -hmm. And we had the In the In the In the House podcast live. Yeah. So not a huge production like that, because I know it takes a village to put that together. But that was so inspiring. It was. Can we just talk about that for two seconds? We should. Yes. Can I, I want to say Amy, Amy, um, she, she's a mortgage broker mm-hmm. and she 
gave me she oh, sent Amy. me a very long text Amy yeah. Parker yeah and um I I don't want to write all the details but it was um such a great DM Amy's um, lovely that she sent to me um I want to just uh give her a shout Some, out. <laughs> oh, sorry, not Amy Parker. Sorry. Matt Parker is her partner yeah. um, in the brokerage. But um, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your last name incorrectly. Amy Kaizen Wetter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she sent me a really long text or DM and she came to my one year anniversary event yesterday. She came to our In the House podcast. Um, she's been really inspired from the messages that we're putting out there. Mm -hmm. So um, somebody like her and yourself who are listening, these in-person mini workshops slash get-togethers slash yeah. brunches, yeah. Uh, we haven't really fulfilled the details yet. We will. But this is what we really want because we, we see you behind the camera um, and we see you through the screen, but we want to really meet you guys. Yeah, and I, I'll give a shout out as well to, sorry, Irene, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, but Irene Kurubin. Okay. Um, she listened to our three-year anniversary podcast live event, and she did share with me um, that it was very impactful for her because there are certain struggles that we all go through. And I think what Jenny and I really want to create is an aligned community where we can all um, serve our highest and best good together and creatively enter new territory and and basically create whatever it is that's important to you um, in your entrepreneurial life and personal life. So mm -hmm. more to come mm -hmm. on those events. Mm -hmm. And um, we look forward to meeting you in person. So if this episode inspires you, please do share it with your peers and colleagues. Um, and uh, we, you know, more and more we are loving these type of type of topics. Love it not so much. so much about real estate, but but because we are able to um, really dig deep into our soul and, and talk yeah. about this, I think it's really important. And have you noticed that this is uh, a lot of men have been in touch that listen to the podcast because it's provided mm -hmm. a safe space for them to be able to share their own awakenings or um, things that they've gone through in their yes. life where it, it's not historically been socially acceptable for them to be so open about it. Mm -hmm. I've noticed it because... They come up to me and talk yeah, to me about it. Yeah, I know, it. me too. I'm like, oh, without, wow, thank you for sharing yeah, that. Yeah, without even really saying that they've listened to the episode, it's more so that they can feel that I understand them. Yeah. And they that they'll feel heard. Yeah, I yeah. love that. So. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. And uh, we look forward to seeing you and speaking with you soon. Thanks, guys.